So in this video review, we're going to talk about three different parts um, that you're going to have on your final exam. And the first part is going to be our linear programming part. And so in linear programming, remember a couple of the concepts were you had to solve systems and write systems, and you also had to find optimal points for a solution to a linear programming problem. So we're going to go through all that in review right now. So this first, and first, uh, this first part says solve the sub, uh, system by substitution. Remember when you substitute, you always want to isolate a single variable. So your goal is to isolate one of these variables. Isolate a variable. And if isolate just means you want a single variable on one side. We already have it sitting here. That variable is isolated. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that and we're going to plug it in for the x in the bottom equation. So in that bottom equation, which is this right here, 4x plus y equals 13, I'm going to replace that x there with the term that is sitting here for x. So that's 4 times... two y minus eight and then that's plus y equals thirteen. So when I solve this, this I'm gonna go ahead and distribute, distribute out, out the four, four to, both to both these, both these terms, terms here. here. And when I do that I get eight y minus four times the negative eight is thirty two plus y is equal to thirteen. If I add like terms the eight y plus the y I get nine y minus 32 is equal to 13. I'm going to go ahead and add 32 to both sides and I get 9y is equal to 13 plus 32 is 45. If I want to solve for y, I'll divide everything by 9 and I get y is equal to positive 5. So now that I know the value of y is 5, I can go back and plug it into this equation right here. And so that'll tell me that x is equal to 2 times y, so that's 2 times 5, minus 8. When I do that, I get x equals 10 minus 8, so I get x is equal to positive 2. And remember, we can write this as a point, so this is the point 2, 5. So that's solving by substitution. If we want to solve by elimination, remember the process for elimination is you're going to get one of these variables to do the exact same. And it's easier to get the plus minus pair here to be the same. So I'm going to multiply this top equation by a positive 4. So I'm going to multiply this top equation right here by 4. When I do that, I get 8x plus 4y is equal to 4 times 7 is 28. And here I'll get 3x. Next equation, I'll get 3x, leave it alone, 3x minus 4y is equal to 5. So we didn't touch that equation at all. I'm going to add these two equations together because I want to eliminate them. So when I do that, 8x plus 3x is 11x. These eliminate, and 28 plus 5 is equal to 33. So now I have 11x is equal to 33. I'll divide everything by 11, and I get x is equal to 3. And now that I know x is equal to 3, I can choose to plug it back into any equation that I have available to me. I'm going to plug it back into the first equation that was untouched. So I'll do 2 times 3 plus y is equal to 7. 2 times 3 is 6 plus y is equal to 7. I'll subtract 6 on both sides. And from there, I get y is equal to 1. And so my solution here is going to be the point 3, 1. And then we can solve by graphing. So to solve by graphing, you have to first get every equation to y equals mx plus b. And we're going to be able to identify the slope and the y-intercept. And remember, when we start, we always start by plotting the y-intercept and then going from there. So if I take this first line, 2x minus y equals 6, and get it to slope-intercept form, the first thing I want to do is I want to move the 2x over. So I'll subtract 2x on both sides. And I get negative y is equal to 6 minus 2x. Or let's write it as 2x minus negative 2x plus 6. And I'll divide this all by negative 1 and change the signs. And so I'll get this equation is just y is equal to positive 2x 
minus 6. The other equation, x plus y, is equal to 6. The first thing I'll do is I'll subtract x on both sides. And here I get y is equal to a negative x plus 6. So if I want to plot the first function, y equals 2x minus 6, plot negative 6 first. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Negative 6 slope says go up 2 over 1. Up 2 over 1. Here's your first line. Second line says go start at positive 6 and go down 1 over 1. You see here is where they're going to intersect at. So the intersection of those two points occur here at that point, which is, which is 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, positive 2. There's your solution by graphing. The next problem says write, an, write a system of equations and solve by the method of your choice. Reserve seat tickets for the football game cost $4 each, and general admission tickets cost $3 each. After the game is over, the turnstile count shows 1,780 people attended the game. The total receipts were $5,792. Find the number of each kind of ticket sold. So in this type of problem, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and write the equations. We need to go ahead and define variables first. So now I have two types of tickets So There is the reserve seats which we'll call x, and then we'll have y, which we'll call the general admission ticket. And so we set this up, we know that the reserve seat tickets cost $4 and general admission tickets cost $3. So we know that this is 4x plus 3y, and that has to equal, this is a money equation, this is the money part of the equation, so that has to equal our money in the end. And in the end, we had that amount of money, so that's equal to 5,792. And the other one, find the tickets for it, kind of shows for, uh, we know that in order to get the total number of tickets, which were these right here, we had to have the reserve seats plus the general seats. They had to be equal to 1787. So one way you can choose to solve this, probably the easiest method to solve this will be through because we already have it set up for a single variable right here, we can solve through a substitution, actually. And I'll substitute, and I'll get x by itself. And so when I do that, I get x is equal to, if I move, the, move this y to this side, I get 1787 minus the y variable. And so I'll go back and plug that into my equation, and I have this 4 times x. Well, x is 1787 minus y. plus 3y is equal to 5792. Notice everything is now written in terms of y. So I'll distribute here and here. I'm going to multiply 4 times 1787. I get 7,148 minus 4y plus 3y is equal to 5792. Combine these like terms right here. That's negative y plus 7148 equals 5792. And then I'll uh, subtract the, subtract 7148 on both sides. And when I do that, I get uh, 5792 minus 7148 is a negative, so I get a negative y is equal to negative 1, 3, 5, 6. That means y is equal to positive 1, 3, 5, 6. So the general tickets, the number of general tickets sold was 1,356 general tickets. And if we want to find our reserve tickets, well, we just can come back to our equation right here. We know that we have 1,356 general tickets. So we'll subtract this total that we had, 1787 minus 1,356 tickets, and we had a total of 431 general tickets. So, so your x is equal to, and so you can write it as a point 431, 1356 if you want to. All right, the next one says, what is the equation of this graph? So to write the equation of a graph, remember every, equa every graph is written in the form y equals mx plus b, but this time, notice that we have shading. So that means we're gonna have to change this symbol. And the symbol says, what we want to do is we want to our y-intercept first. 
our y-intercept here is negative 2. So we know that b has to be negative 2. If we want to find the slope of the graph, we just need to put another point on the graph. Put one here. And we'll count up 1, 2, over 1, 2. So I went up by 2, and I went to the left by 1. So that means my slope, m, m is always equal to the rise over the run. So in this case, m is equal to positive 2 over negative 1. So my equation is y is equal to negative 2x minus 2. But because we have this shading taking place up here, because shading is taking place up here in the equation, we know that we are above the y-intercept. We're above the y-intercept. And because we're above the y-intercept, we need to do either a greater than or a greater than or equal to. Well, because the line is a, because this is a solid line, it's going to be greater than or equal to. There's a solution there. So if I want to solve a system of equations by graphing, remember to solve a system by graphing, what you're going to do is you're going to plot these points. So we're going to come in here, we're going to plot these points. Um, we're going to plot y equal greater than x plus 1. So to do that, my m is equal to 1. My b is also equal to 1. So I'll plot that first, m up 1 over 1. And because it's greater than, this is a dashed line. And we want to shade above the y-intercept. So we want to be above the y-intercept up here. So we'll shade there. So here's the first part of your shade. Right? And then the second part is y is less than x minus 5. So we have m here, again, is 1. And b is negative 5. And again, you're going to go up 1 over 1. And when you shade here, you're going to shade below the y-intercept. This thing go below the y-intercept. So we're going below this y-intercept this time. And notice that they want the solution to this, but there is no crossing or no intersection of the actual shade. And so your answer here is going to be no solution. We have no crossing of the actual shading. All right, one more problem like this. It says, Homer sells tickets for admission to your school and play and collects a total of $104. Admission prices are $6 for adults and $4 for children. He sold 21 total tickets. How many of each type of ticket were sold? So in this particular case, he sold, um, we have a price equation, and we have a number of total of sold equation. So he sells adult tickets, so we'll let x equal adult. And he sells children tickets, so we'll let y equal children. So they tell us that uh, there's $4 for, $6 for adults. So 6x plus 4y has to be equal to 104. And then there's 21 tickets sold, so that's x plus 4y. I mean, x plus y has to be equal to 21. Again, I can substitute, but since we did that already, let's go ahead and eliminate this time. And I'll multiply the bottom equation by, let's eliminate the y. So I'll multiply the bottom equation by 4, by negative 4, because I want to change signs. So top equation is still 6x plus 4y equals 104. Bottom equation is now going to be negative 4x minus 4y is equal to a negative 84. I'll add these equations so I get 2x here cancels. 104 minus 84 is equal to a positive 20. So x is equal to 10. So if x equals 10, I need to go ahead and find y. Well, we can see that if x is 10, y has to be 11 to get to 21. So y is equal to 11. So here are actual linear programming problems. And for the following, we're going to identify the constraints, write the objective, find the corner points, and identify the point that maximizes or minimizes the objective function. It says the BMW Leather Company wants to add homemade belts and wallets to its product line. Each belt nets the company $18 in profit, and each wallet nets $12. Both belts and wallets require cutting and sewing. Belts require two hours of cutting in time, 
and six hours of sewing time, while it's required three hours of cutting time and three hours of sewing time. If the cutting machine is available, 12 hours a week, and serving machine, sewing machine is available 18 hours per week, what ratio of belts and miles will produce the most profit? So we know we want to produce most profit. That's what we're going to try to do. We're going to maximize. And we know that our profit equation comes from we make either belts, which we'll call X, and we make wallets, which we'll call Y. And we know that we net $18 in belts and $12 in wallets. So Z will be equal to 18X plus 12Y. Right? And from there, we're going to actually create the constraints. But well, we know the constraints have to be, first off, non-negative. So we have to make something. So we're going to make x greater than or equal to 0 is one of our constraints. And the other one is that y is also greater than or equal to 0. Those are our non-negative constraints. Now we can go build the rest of the constraints. We have two processes, either cutting and sewing. Belts require two hours of cutting. So that is 2x. Um, wallets require three hours of cutting. So that's plus 3y, and we only have $12 available to cut in a week. So that has to be less than or equal to 12. Can't exceed that. Likewise, in a, uh, it costs, there are six hours of sewing time and three hours of sewing time for those. So that's 6x plus 3y. That also has to be... We only have seven, uh, 18 hours available for that. It has to be less than or equal to 18. So here are our constraints. So we can go ahead and graph these constraints. And we want to first get them to y equals. So I'll take this first equation here. And I'll move it to y equals. So I'll subtract off 2x on both sides. It's negative 2x plus 12. I'm going to divide everything by 3. And I get y is less than or equal to a negative 2 thirds x plus 4. So I'll plot the plus 4 first. So let's go down 2, down 2 over 3, down 2 over 3. So there's your first one. Uh, the other equation is going to be, I'll do this one next, 6x plus 3y is less than 18, so I'll move the uh, 18 over. I'm going to move 6x over. 3y is less than or equal to a negative 6x plus 18. I will divide everything by 3. And I'm going to get an equation that says y is less than or equal to a negative 2x plus 6. So down 2 over 1. 1 down 2 over 1 down 2 over 1. down 2 over 1. Redo that one. Let me redo that one again. So 6 down 2 over 1, down 2 over 1, down 2 over 1. There we go. So here are the lines that I am getting. Um, the first one looks like this. Go ahead and try to put a line on that for you. First line. Second line. There you go. Now, for this particular point, it's hard to tell where they're intersecting yet because there is no definitive point. So what we have to do here, we actually have to do some algebra to calculate that value. But we can go ahead and look at our corner points. Here's one corner point at the point 0, 4. Because we're going to be shading, and we're shading beneath both of these, by the way. We're shading beneath both of them. So we're going to shade the purple like this. We're going to shade the green like this. Beneath it. So we're in this region right here as the uh, defined region for us. Will be region. So here's a corner point at zero four. Here's a corner point at corner point at um, looks like three zero. And then this point zero zero is probably always going to be a corner point. And then we need to figure out what that is. So to do that, we have to do some algebra. 
and we need to take the equation and see where they intersect at. So I'm going to actually multiply this one by a negative 1 to eliminate the y's, because you see you have plus 3, plus 3, so just make this one a negative 1. So when I do that, I get 2x minus, I get negative 2x minus 3y, and I'm just going to set it equal because I'm just solving an equation, negative 12, and the bottom stays at 6x plus 3y equals 18. So when I do that, I can see that here, those are going to cancel. I get negative 4x is equal to a 12 minus 18, or negative 12 plus 18, I'm adding those. That is 6. I'm going to divide everything by negative 4. And I get x equal to, sorry, that's a positive 4, not a negative 4. I get x is equal to 3 halves. So this point of intersection, you can see it looks like it's almost there. As, as a matter of fact, it's at uh, 3 halves, which is 1.5. 3 halves, 1.5, and it looks like it's at the y value of, we need to go and calculate the y value now. So to get the y value, I'm going to plug it back into either one of those equations. I'll plug it back into the first one. So I know that x is 3 halves, so that's 2 times 3 halves plus 3y equals 12. Those twos are going to cancel. That's 3 plus 3y is equal to 12. I'm going to go ahead and subtract off the 3 from both sides. I get 3y is equal to a 9 divided by 3. I get y equals 3. So that's 1.5, the point 1.53. So there go your points for your corners. And that second corner point, this, this last corner point was a little bit harder to find because you had to actually do a little uh, uh, some algebra behind it. But we can do that algebra there to get that. So now we need to go ahead and see which one maximizes profit. So remember I have, I have the corners and I have my profit. So my corners are going to be at, um, the first one, 0, 0, is going to give me a, remember, I plug into this equation right here, 18x plus 12y. So I'm plugging into 18x plus 12y to get this. When I do that with 0, 0, I get 0. My next corner is at, we'll go 0, 4 next. When I plug that in, 18 times 0 is 0, 12 times 4 is 48. So that's a $48 profit. Next corner is at uh, 3, 0. 18 times 3 is 54. And 12 times 0 is 0. So that's $54 profit. And then my last one's at 1.53. So if I do this right here, 18 times 1.5 is 27 plus 3 times 12, this will be a $63 profit. So here the answer is going to be, you should make 1.5 belts, which doesn't really make sense, but so we're going to go with this, 1.5 belts and 3 wallets. That's going to maximize your profit with the most amount of money. This problem says you are in charge of decorating the school gym for graduation. You need to buy gold and blue rolls of crepe paper. Uh, gold crepe paper costs five dollars per roll, and blue crepe blue, blue crepe paper costs three dollars per roll. You will need at least ten rolls of crepe paper. You want no more than seven rolls of blue, and no more than six rolls of gold. How many rolls of each color crepe paper should you buy to maximize to minimize your cost? What is the minimum cost? So we know that we have to have you going to buy gold. Let's check my, and so we're going to have a gold color which we'll call X, and we have a blue color, which we'll call Y. Gold crepe is $5 for roll, and blue crepe is $3 for roll. So we know that Z, in this particular case, Z is equal to, this is going to be our profit equation, Z is equal to, or in this case, our loss, how much we're spending, 5X plus 3Y. You need at least 10 rolls of crepe paper. So we need at least 10, so that means that we have to, so we, again, we have to make, we have to buy gold, and we have to buy blue. And we know that when we buy these, x plus y has to be at least 10, greater than or equal to 10. But you don't want any more than seven rows of blue. So I don't want any more than seven rows of blue. So x has to be less than 
are equal to seven. And you don't want more than six rows of gold. So y has to be less than or equal to six. So we can shorten this, actually, we can combine these two with these two down here. We can write it like this. The x variable, you can write it as, um, I wrote these backwards real quick. Let me go back and change these variables. This should be y. This should be x. So the x variable can be written like this. It's 0 less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to 6. The y variable can be written like this. It's 0 less than or equal to y, which is less than or equal to 7. You want to minimize the cost. So we need to graph this first function right here. Graph that. And to get that in the graphing form, we're just going to move the x over. It says y is greater than or equal to negative x plus 10. So plot on 10. Go down 1 over 1. And it has to be greater than or equal to that. So we're going to shade above all of this out here. And then y itself x is the gold has to be in between zero and six so zero and six so you have a line that does something like this right here it has to be in between these two values so your gold takes place inside of here the blue paper is going to be bounded at you have uh, it has to be less than seven so it'll be here like this. And so what we're looking for now is where is this shaded region? Where is the shaded region taking place at? So it looks like that the shaded region, because the blue will be down here like this, is this little bitty triangle sitting inside of here. It's this little bitty triangle right here. There, um, take that off. Here, corner. Um, here's a corner, and here is the other corner. There goes your corners. So there goes your corners there, and you have, if you look at your corner pieces, so we know our corners, and we're talking about costs. We have a corner at, it looks like, it looks like 3, 7 is a corner. It looks like 6, 7 is a corner. And it looks like 6, 4 is also a corner. So, so we go ahead and try to evaluate these. Uh, 3, 7 is your first corner. That's 15 plus 7 times 3 is 21. So that's 15 plus 21. That'll be $36. 6, 7, 6 times 5 is 30, 7 times 3 is 21, so that's 30 plus 21, that'll be $51. And then 6, 4, 6 times 5 is 30 plus 12, that'll be $42. So it looks like our actual corner that's going to minimize the cost and give us what we need. We need at least 10 rows. We have three golds and seven blues.